uh, Tomiyosu Sensei's house where we'd like to uh, ask some questions and uh, sort of summarize the, uh, the trip to China. Uh, Mr. Tomiyosu, uh, for our American audience, we would very much appreciate if you could uh, tell us your, some of your views about the China trip, most especially about the, uh, the finding of uh, uh, Sensei uh, Shu Shiwa and perhaps uh, some of your observations on the demonstrations that we saw. Okay. <coughs> well, uh, what I can say now, the trip we made to China was very su successful. From the point of view of that uh, the Fujian city, uh, like a deputy mayor of the city, and all of his staffers uh, were entirely welcomed us, and they are uh, very earnestly want to find out what we are looking for. Uh, uh, this time, we, what we found, uh, that the Shu Shiva Sensei was not the teacher of uh, Kampong Village Sensei. Uh, and yet, uh, we found some clue uh, now we can chase where Kambun Yit Sensei stayed and from whom he had studied. And I, I hope by the next visit uh, those things will be cleared uh, by another trip. In other words, we started a cultural exchange yes. now and opened a dialogue where formerly it was closed to, to us and they are going to continue to uh, search yes. for some more clues. Yes. Very good. And uh, also my daughter is still in there. And uh, I will try to call her and leave many messages to find out what we are looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, and also Deputy Mayor promised us he's welcome the uh, do you have any indication as to what style the tiger style may relate to with any Okinawan styles? What I have ob observed uh, was that the uh, majority of styles uh, studied currently by uh, most young people today in China is much more mo modernized, or I would say, <coughs> like uh, Bruce Lee or Jackie Chan. His uh, working is uh, greatly uh, affect them, and uh, many young guys are. Uh, tend to study all the big movements instead of really uh, effective you know, uh, uh, techniques of martial arts. Uh, however, the two uh, karatekas, the performers katas, that demonstration, I think they, they are studying very good, very hard, training. More the old uh, style. Yes, like Tsuru, uh, Tsuru no Te, Kaku, and also Tiger. <coughs> the crane style and the tiger. Yeah, uh, the crane style guy was beautiful. He was, uh, his downness was so, and he just moves 
very uh, gracious. Yet, his, what uh, I, I, I thought you, you have seen, his shoulders way down. That means he has been trained very hard. One not cannot make that shoulder down. Mm-hmm. Even though his hand moves graciously, but uh, beautiful. And tiger uh, cutters, he was from here up, was very good. But down is was not really good. So he might be trained pretty well. Maybe he didn't practice so long time, maybe. He mentioned that he didn't practice regularly. Ah, no wonder. But he has been trained in the past. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, we could see that. Do you want to ask the question? Okay, Josh, go ahead. We have been looking for uh, Shushiwa for almost 20 years now. At what point did uh, we get sort of off the track, and what role does Shushiwa play in uh, the overall martial arts with, uh, within the scope of the Weitsiru Association? Well, uh, so far as I know, Shushiwa Sensei was one of the very famous martial artists in the uh, Fukien province. And uh, back to 1966, when we made a trip to Taiwan, I had asked to a very old man in Taiwan, and, uh, <clears throat> and he mentioned us, our styles, Huang Gai Nun, and uh, he mentioned us that uh, this came from Fukien province, especially Fujian. And he mentioned our style must belong to Shiva Sensei. Ever since we took, we just assumed that Shiva Sensei must be a Kanduichi's teacher. And uh, from that day, uh, we were trying to find out uh, who Shiva was and from who he has studied. But we couldn't get any information about him. But by this trip, we uh, uh, was sure Shoshiwa Sensei was not teacher of Kamun Yatsu Sensei. Because uh, that style belonged to, definitely belonged to uh, Gojuri. The style, the, the, the tiger style. Yeah. But at the time, uh, back in the 60s, you uh, one time thought that uh, Goju and Weiji had the same roots. Yeah. I think so, the reason must be the same. Yeah, so that at some point, perhaps Shushiwa, uh, perhaps he studied many styles. And I think when, uh, when I first studied from you, you said Kangum studied many styles, or maybe three styles, and then selected this, st- this particular style. So there's still a lot of unanswered questions, and it's possible that Shushiwa may have been uh, maybe uh, an assistant teacher, because he was very young at that time, mm-hmm. approximately 23 years old, when Kanbun was over there, maybe 18 or 19 years old. So uh, it's possible they, they had some meeting. Uh, also, uh, he had a Japanese friend, according to the Chinese researchers. Uh, they, Shushiwa was known to have a very close Japanese friend. Do you remember any of the stories that, uh, that you told me originally back in the 50s about Kangum's first going to China? And I remember vaguely that uh, he, uh, maybe it's an inaccurate story, but so he had saved someone's life or he had uh, rescued a, a child and in gratitude someone then began teaching him. Do you remember any stories at all back in that, that time relating to Kangbun's journey? to China. Well, Kambun Sensei, the journey to China uh, was because of the... uh, His parents uh, 
didn't want uh, he be drafted by the Japanese army. And so, uh, since he, he, he was a uh, only son, they decided to send him to China. But uh, not because of studying karate. However, one, one thing, what I uh, recall now is uh, Kanbun Sensei told us he has studied Shaolin Ryu first at the Ryu Kyu Kan. You know what the Ryu Kyu Kan is? Ryu Kyu Kan yeah. is the old, Ryu Kyu. Yeah, Ryu Kyu Embassy, Embassy. in, in uh, Fujian City. He worked there. For the time being, maybe maybe less than a year. And while he was staying in Ryu Kyu Kan, he studied Shaolin Ryu. But when he got acquainted with his uh, Chinese friend, he was taken to the place uh, where the martial artist. He became very friendly with this man and was taught with this style. Isn't it possible that a young man would probably make friends with another young man rather than an older man? Perhaps that's the Maybe. connection. Yeah, say, uh, could be. And the fact that Xu Shiwa over his lifetime spent and studied many styles, mm. it's, it's still conceivable that Xu Shiwa had some connection. connection. Especially in a small village like yeah. that, I would think all the martial arts community was very tight. So we still may find that Xu Xiwa had some relationship with... But the Kanbun Sensei told me many times, Tomoyo said, this style, karate, will not be studied in you know, just normal Chinese, even normal Chinese mm -hmm. can study this style very precise and not open to secret, you know. Kept secret, but never shown to in the public. Mm -hmm. And uh, this particular style was only taught inside temple. Central temple? I don't know what the uh, name of the temple. Interesting. So, he was very proud of this, Kambuvius and so So it's, it's very possible that the, the Chinese in general are not aware of this style. Did he say that it was taught to other people? Or oh, yes. a very small? For three years he, he taught. For three years. No, I mean, uh, his teacher, Kambuvius Sensei's teacher, did he teach many no. students or just a few? I don't know. So it's conceivable if if Xu Shiwa was not Kangong Sensei's teacher, but in maybe associ associate, maybe, maybe uh, a student, maybe the two were students at the same kind time. Of connection, but, no. but if there wasn't taught to many people, then maybe that style has died out too, and may may not have survived, uh, especially during the uh, Cultural <coughs> Revolution or after the Revolution when. And also. Uh, Kambun uh, Sensei also taught only three years mm -hmm. and left there. So I don't know what happened. <coughs> Sensei, isn't it possible that because it was a secret system that was transmitted in secret, that it might have been transmitted behind an open practice? In other words, it might have been a, a, an open school, and behind the open school was the inner practice between the, the real senior people. And is it not also possible that this inner practice, being an inner practice, an inner secret, might still exist, but no one has come forward for us? Maybe so. Maybe so. Yeah. Maybe so. Perhaps even in the audience, there may have been people who knew what they were seeing. Might be. That's <laughs> possible. That's, uh, that's what I was hoping. Maybe if we continue this cultural exchange and, and we can support the, the, the understanding between the, the three cities that possibly in the future, if we have our 
uh, representatives in Fukushu, that eventually someone may come forward and say, I know what you're doing. I practice also. I, I think that's a very good possibility, especially with the Chinese political situation where for many years it was banned. So I mean, all of a sudden, someone has to come out and say, well, I, even, I was doing something illegal for many years. So they may be very careful about uh, showing themselves and presenting this. Maybe uh, it, will, it will, will require more uh, uh, liberalization on the part of the Chinese government towards the, the martial arts. Right now, Wushu is still a government approved sport and they do not like the connotation of military or fighting because that is something that projects a, a negative image to the outside world. So they may not even want to promote that kind of old system. They <coughs> prefer the new. Yeah, that's what I understand. Uh, their, uh, their, the, the study, I mean, uh, what can I say? Uh, very, very recently, they have started to practice this uh, martial arts thing. Yes. Very recently. 74. Yeah. Presented it to the outside That's world right. for the first That's time. Right. right. So the, uh, those real experts still hide behind. Mm -hmm. they're, they're quite possible. Even the Instead of coming out, you know. The old man that we met the day before we left, the day we left, uh, was of that kind. He remembered the old systems, and he was sitting in the audience watching, and his comments, again, were that what, what we were doing was like the old uh -huh. system. Very practical, uh, very see. direct, no wasted movements. Exactly. And uh, he could appreciate that. So there may have been other people in the audience, too, who we didn't have an opportunity to meet. Yeah, those people might not have known. Oh. Because in, uh, when the Chiang Kai-shek uh, overturned the Qin Dynasty, all martial artists was belonged to Qin Dynasty to support the emperor. Uh -huh. And when the coup d'etat was you know, succeeded, those guys were just <laughs> went down underground. Never came up. Right. There's been one repression after another, so That's right. it's just beginning to come out. By group. Mm -hmm. That makes a big difference. Individual would be more changed because it, it, to the person. Yeah, and, and also the, uh, the way move very fast instead of uh, uh, taking step everything uh, movements like uh, when you teach the group you are teach by calling number yes. one two instead of just yeah. you know those things makes big difference in, in so many years yeah. mm. I found it very difficult to teach when I first went back to the United States with, with maybe ten students much different than you t taught me all of a sudden, start breaking the movements down by the numbers. See? Then it's the change, and Kanai Sensei, too, starting here rather yeah. than, than up right. here, the way That's you taught right. me. Yeah. That's right. But, but uh, in the past, when taught individually, we never, no movements will never step. Just like this, try to copy your teacher. Right. Instead of one, two, just one movement. That's, you know, by gradually, makes a big difference. The timing yes. changes. The timing, timing is everything. Change, yes. Timing is everything. Also, breathing changes, too. The old man pointed out that, uh, that and I, I see it when your, your movements, uh, moving, blocking, punching, same time, at right. you know, one point, yes. which when you do by the numbers, can't you, do that. you lose, okay. you lose that. Yeah, that's right. Design for in fight technique. In fighting. In fighting. Close close encounters. Yes. That's why which is real which is karate 
they kick. You will never kick upward, but from here down is. So uh, not that way, but to build your here gut to inside, penetrate into his opponent's body. Very destructive. You just to kick properly the maybe surface blues inside your head. But which is kick is real gut in. Damage inside instead of surface. That's why the training has to be very hard to uh, withstand that. So <coughs> even uh, so can and the way we achieve the block is not 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 direct you know, like this way and big like that but very small that's got to close in this is uh, which is the best technical but unfortunately today is spreading not like that very design to to you have to make a distance and keep a distance you know that's a very it's a very confusing subject that you just brought up and I'd like to plumb that for a second you know it I, I haven't practiced that long maybe nine years or so and I still have have a, a very difficult time relating our practice to the practice of sparring and I don't understand the the meaning or the, the, the objective in sparring practice as it relates to the way we, to the objective of our, of our training. Perhaps you can give us some images or some hints on how to make sparring, I mean, should we spar? And if so, how do we make that a meaningful practice? Okay. <clears throat> the purpose of sparring is through sparring, you can, uh, you can, and I say, you can take him, uh, take your opponent's movements, study your opponent's movements in uh, many different situations. And you also practice how to cope against those attacks. And also, you have to know how you can get into, closely into him and make a final uh, attack. So just through the sparring, you can uh, learn a lot of time to get your final thing. So it's, sparring is very important too. When you say sparring, you, you mean yeah. necessarily freestyle or uh, prearranged sparring? No, like, uh, uh, freestyle too. Freestyle. No, boss is okay. Yeah. Yeah, boss is good. Yeah. Now, in my experience, if you take people who have only practiced four or five years or less, and you put them in a ring or put them on a mat and have them spar, what they do looks like Dog kung fu fight. movies. Dog fight. Dog fight. Dog fight. <laughs> yes. Okay. How do you, how do you, what do you do in your practice to okay. make the sparring practice real practice instead of just the dog fighting? Okay. Good. Uh, well, it can't uh, avoid you know, dog fighting for the time being because everybody wants to excite it, you know, get him down. Or, uh, to get point. So their food is really up, not real, you know, uh, stem. That means he are too eager to get him. Let's make dog fight. So when you are very sure yourself, it's not such hasty. Move with his move. Then by practicing so many sparring, you can get it. That's no, no problem. 
so you have to put the idea of winning aside and concentrate on the practice. Yes. yes. And remember always good spur, a little good fighter is always a very good form of katas. Even though he might miss him both. <laughs>